There's a complete parallel for me between being outside, you're limited only to your own curiosity. With food, if you can abolish fear from your, your mindset, you just almost know where you can go. For 37-year-old Eduardo Garcia, each breath of fresh Montana mountain air is another chance at life. The outdoors is sort of where I reset, and then as a chef, obviously, it's where I go to get a lot of what I eat. This, this a yacht chef, you know, was making good money, had a good career, and I was kind of stepping into this next thing. On October 9th, 2011, everything changed. While hiking, Garcia saw what he believed to be a dead bear cub in a large tin can. As he got closer... I took a knife out of my hip, put it in my left hand, 2,400 volts of power arced, and I was electrocuted. That can, an old junction box that had been compromised and was still dangerously active. My eyes opened, and I knew in that moment that I was dying, and I was walking to get help. I was walking to save my life. Within three hours, Eduardo was med-jetted to the University of Utah's Burn Trauma Center, where charred and near death, he would spend 48 days undergoing 18 surgeries. This bone-chilling quote from the surgeon on call was that I was a uh, bag of bones with a heartbeat when I was gurned in that day. Then, it was a Sunday afternoon and the surgeon just said, hey, here's the deal, is there's an infection in your damaged left hand. The following Tuesday, surgeons amputated his left hand. I had a job to do, and my job was to be an active participant in my own recovery. And so relearning, it was everything. Trying to learn fine knife skills or peeling, and I've had to learn I don't need to be a perfectionist in the kitchen anymore. From my recreation, it was relearning how to fly fish and relearning how to be outside safely again. You change, you, you morph. Is that rhubarb? That's rhubarb. I've thought about why me and why was I spared or how did I make it through that every day. We are all born fighters. I think that's the only thing that got me out of the woods that day is that nothing remained except the fighting world to live. Life was not meant to be walked solo. And I think I knew that before my injury, and yet I don't know if I was truly living it. Mm. Eduardo Garcia, good morning to you, good morning. sir. Good morning. It, it's, it's an amazing story it on is. so many levels. First of all, how are you doing today? Feeling fine? Feeling good? <laughs> you got a great sense of humor about all of this. You have to. I think we decided early on as a family. I shouldn't say we, and that's important. I think it was my older sister, Indra, who was like, we got to laugh through this. Mm -hmm. you, know, and then, you know, and then I think the next step was we had to encourage others to laugh with us because mm -hmm. you don't know how to approach it from right. the outside. Where does that resilience come from? I mean, obviously you take it in from, from your family and the people you surround yourself with, but how do you get yourself through each next step? One step at a time, mm -hmm. one at a time. I think I remember cooking at 15 and having all these tickets up, and they're all the same thing. It's burger, cheeseburger, pizza, fry, burger, <laughs> and you do it one at a time, one mm -hmm. at a time. And Eduardo, we know you got married earlier this year. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Talk about what this year has been life like for you, both personally, but also professionally in terms of your cooking and in terms of your healing. Yeah, well, personally, um, I mean, getting married is tremendous. Mm -hmm. I'm 38, and, and so it's coming up to that crux move in my life. Mm -hmm. was huge. Um, and then, of course, the professional side, working our, my food company, Montana Max, and trying to pay attention and respect the recovery process, the emotional recovery process, and also professionally just still be me, still be a chef and put myself into that. It's been a funky balance, but working to find that balance still. Mm -hmm. How much of cooking has been a part of your healing process? It's been huge. Yeah. It's been huge. We, you know, at one point, it was looking at holding a knife or trying to hold a piece of produce again. Well, how in the heck do you, you got a hook? You know, how do you <laughs> figure that out? Mm -hmm. And you just have to step in, step up to the table and just start participating. Just say, all right, one at a time. And it may be a failure yeah. or maybe a success. It doesn't really matter. Just step up. Mm -hmm. We're just a few days away from a new year. What's, uh, what's 2020 hold in store for Eduardo? You know, I think I've kind of I have this burning curiosity. And on the one hand, I could think, well, that's what got me here. Mm -hmm. And yet I realize the curiosity is a skill set. This is a beautiful thing. And yet focusing back, and I think I've realized that humility is a superpower. Mm. And saying, okay, I'm going to humbly step into all of my dreams and all my aspirations, but invite others to participate and say, all right, let's take this idea, let's take Montana Max, and let's see where it can go. Mm -hmm. What are your specialties? What, what is your, your go-to <laughs> recipe? You know, I love cooking over coals. I love cooking mm. over a fire. I think it, it's this innate connection we all have. And, uh, and then I love doing it together mm -hmm. as in a group. You know, So I could cook by myself probably tastes great, 
but it always tastes so much better when I'm doing it with family, friends, with others. Well, we thank you so much for sharing your story with us and for your strength and your resilience. Eduardo, thank you. My pleasure. It's a remarkable story. Thank you.